So at the end of part one, we got as far as this formula, 16 sided area is equal to the octagon plus eight times whatever. And um, what we can see is that actually in general, we can write it like this. Um, so this is basically the same formula as here but this is just for 16 sides and in general you can see that you're going to double this number every time oops I can't play them so that triangle you're going to double this number every time sine and the theta, theta n is going to increase with each term so the next one's going to be 16 to the sine theta 3 etc um, so you end up with this formula and then where we've defined theta 1 to be 45 degrees or pi over 4 radians uh, and then theta n is defined recursively from theta n minus 1 over 2 and to evaluate the signs and causes here we need some formula for the, the uh, values um, so we're going to work out a half angle formula starting with a cosine and double angle formula this is a well known double angle formula for cosine uh, and then we just substitute 2 alpha in um, no we, we let 2 alpha equals uh, theta so then 2 alpha will turn into theta here and alpha will be theta over 2 and we'll get this formula and rearrange it by adding 1 to both sides of this and divided by 2 to get cos theta squared on its own we get this formula and then from the basically from Pythagoras' theorem which can also be written uh, if we um, divide both sides by the hypotenuse in the Pythagoras' theorem then what you get is the adjacent plus adjacent over the hypotenuse squared uh, plus the opposite of uh, the hypotenuse squared is equal to 1 which is another way of saying cos squared plus sine squared is equal to 1 so this is actually Pythagoras' theorem so anyway we uh, substitute in here um, for um, uh, th th theta over 2 for alpha in that formula um, and then we just uh, rearrange and then what we get is um, sine squared over 2 is 1 minus cos squared over 2 and then so now if we go back to the original series so that was developing some half angle formulas so if we go back to this original series here and we just look at this term the 1 minus cos theta n and sine theta n um, then and we multiply that out then obviously we've got sine times 1 minus cos times sine uh, and then from the double angle formula for sine um, we can see that by comparison look the standard double angle formula for sine uh, is 2 times sine theta cos theta and here we've got a cos theta sine theta which is the same as sine theta cos theta so this here is actually just a half of this um, and so when we substitute that in then we get to, um, uh, another formula inst instead of the original we have this sine theta n minus a half sine theta n minus one now this is a recursive formula um, but when we substitute this back into the expression for a so now instead of using this 1 minus cos theta n sine theta n we've done after the rearranging we've rewritten it as sine theta minus a half sine theta n minus 1 uh, and then when we substitute that in this actually becomes a telescoping series so for example a7 would be 2 square root of 2 plus 8 sine theta 2 blah 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 all this but what we notice is that here we've got 16 times sine theta 2 
Uh, well, well, when we multiply this out, we get 8 sine theta 2 minus 4 sine theta 1 plus 16 sine theta 3 minus 8 sine theta 2. Oh, we can see, look, this 8 sine theta 2 is cancelling with this 8 sine theta 2 here. And then the 16 sine theta 3 is cancelling with the 16 sine theta 3. And actually everything cancels out, apart from this 64, the very last term, 64 sine theta 5. And we're by noticing that actually um, this term 4 sine theta 1 is the same as 2 square root of 2. So 4 sine theta 1 is 4 times sine 45, which is 4 times 1 over square root of 2, multiply top or bottom by square root of 2, and we get 2 square root of 2. So that, that term and that term cancel. So we're left with a7 is 64 sine theta 5. And in general, am is equal to 2 to the m minus 1 sine theta m minus 2. So now, if we substitute in t for cos theta, and we look at these two formulas, cos squared theta here and sine squared theta here, when we substitute in, let t equal t1 equals cos theta 1, yeah? Then we can see that t2 in this formula would be the square root of t1 plus 1 over 2, which is this formula here, yeah? And t1, because cos of 45 is 1 over square root of 2, T1 is this, and then when, um, so this approximation for pi comes out of the expression for AM, because if we know from, and the key, the key equation here is the one for sine squared theta, yeah? So if we know Tn, that's cos theta, whatever the theta n is, uh, then we know that uh, if we square root it, we get the sine theta, which is in this final expression. And we have to multiply this 2 to the m minus 1. So this am becomes this term, 2 to the n plus 2 square root of 1 minus t to the n. And what we notice is that it actually does converge pretty quickly. If you can see the difference between this and the actual value of pi. It goes, because pi is 3.141526, and then there should be 535, but uh, it stops here. So by the 12th decimal place, it's this accurate, this approximation. Uh, just by doing these recursive square roots, which I think is quite neat. But uh, the, the problem is that the um, uh, rounding errors outweigh everything, and after that, um, I can't get any more precision. I'd have to do a higher um, uh, digit length uh, calculation, because the rounding errors drown it out after 12 steps. Um, but anyway, um, I was just playing around and uh, found this formula, kind of like it, and it does converge pretty quickly as you can see. Hope you like the video, please like and uh, subscribe.